Hi everyone, Jake Cherapika here from the Owings Mills branch of the Baltimore County Public Library. Have you been stuck at home playing through your favorite horror video games? Maybe you've been enjoying the newest Resident Evil game to come out, or perhaps playing through a classic like The Last of Us, Amnesia, Five Nights at Freddy's, or maybe you've just been re-watching through your favorite horror movies. Whatever the case, I have the perfect book suggestions for you fans of the twisted and terrifying. First up, I have one of Stephen King's masterpieces, The Shining. The Shining takes place in the Overlook Hotel, a massive and isolated hotel in the mountains. In the winter, they hire a caretaker that's going to keep up with the hotel and make sure that, you know, it doesn't flood and different things like that. The only catch is, during the winter, this hotel is completely isolated. You can't leave it, you can't get to civilization. Now, the Torrance family decides to take on this job, hoping that both the money and the free time will allow them to grow, grow closer as a family. Only, this is Stephen King. This doesn't quite work out. The Overlook is filled with old memories and more sinister things. And that combined with the isolation has a horrific effect on the Torrance family, specifically Jack Torrance. If you like horror stories that combine supernatural and psychological terror and swirl it together into the perfect combination, then The Shining is most definitely for you. It is available as both an ebook and an e-audiobook on Overdrive and Cloud Library, so give it a try today. Maybe you're looking for something a little bit more visually compelling. I would recommend the Japanese manga series Vampire Hunter D. Vampire Hunter D follows the adventures and exploits of D, a damp fear who is both half vampire and half human, and happens to be the offspring of Dracula, which makes him ridiculously powerful. He hires out his services to various villagers in this gothic setting to hunt down supernatural terror. One really interesting thing about this series, though, is it's almost post-apocalyptic. There's high-level technology from hundreds of years ago that few people, specifically vampires, have access to, but no one quite knows exactly how it works anymore. And there's a sense of great loss in the world as humans live in medieval villages, but vampires walk by with mechanical horses. It's a fascinating series that is packed punt with full action sequences, creepy gothic castles, and then like spaceships. So if you're looking to try something a little bit different, give Vampire Hunter D a try. You can read it on Overdrive. Have you ever spent time talking to friends or family about what you would do during the zombie apocalypse? Maybe you've made joke zombie plans with friends or perhaps played a role-playing game that takes place in it, or maybe you're just a really, really big fan of zombies. Well, I have the perfect book for you, World War Z by Max Brooks. Now, I know a movie came out about this, but that movie really didn't follow the book at all. World War Z is a global perspective on how the world would react to the zombie apocalypse. It has chapters that are from all over the world. So each chapter is a different person's perspective, almost as if they're being interviewed by a scholar. It might jump from rural China, where the outbreak started, or go to Europe, where people have decided to huddle inside of ancient castles, thinking the moats and massive walls will protect them from zombies. Then maybe it'll jump to the remnants of the American nation, where the president is pointing out all the different problems based on supply, because everything that we've grown used to, including root beer, draws from multiple countries that just aren't able to supply supplies anymore. Or maybe it goes to the surfer dudes in California talking about the whales who have started to go extinct, except for up all the way in the Antarctic. Whatever the case, World War Z takes a multiple perspective view on the zombie apocalypse. It's fascinating, it's about more than just zombies, and it's action-packed. If you like the idea of reading about the zombie apocalypse that is almost feels real, World War Z by Max Brooks is for you. This is available both on Overdrive and Cloud Library as audio and ebook. I particularly recommend the audiobook as each segment has a different voice actor that really lends it almost a realistic feel while still being really fun. Perhaps you're looking for something that might be sort of suspenseful but not quite terrifying. Well, I have the perfect book for you. This is Illumini by Jay Kristoff. Illumini is a science fiction space adventure. It takes place when one colony of people is attacked by a rival corporation and they are forced to flee the planet on a spaceship that has rescued them. 
However, the spaceship not set up to save thousands and thousands of people is overtaxed and supplies are running the limit. And in addition, the people trying to kill them are following them through space. This has the tense feel of you know, Star Wars combined with some of the really, really tense moments of Alien as people are isolated, they're lacking supplies, and there's some deeper dangers going on. One thing I really enjoy is it's written as if it's a series of documents hacked from somebody's computer. So even though it looks really, really long, many sections are actually fairly short, but visually compelling. The space battles are almost drawn out in words, and one of the characters, an awakened AI, has really, really unique perspectives that just lends a feel that I've never read in a book before. If you like tense dogfights in space, if you think the idea of, uh, again, another zombie outbreak but in space is cool, give Illumini a try. Perhaps you're looking for something set in more modern feel, but still has that science fiction fantasy flair. Well then, I would suggest Stormfront by Jim Butcher. Stormfront is the first book of the Dresden Files, a series that follows Harry Dresden, a modern day wizard in Chicago. Now you might be thinking, well, what, what does that have to do with anything? Well, Harry Dresden works as a private investigator, and he uses his magical talents to investigate things that other people can't quite explain. So in this book, he's going to be tracking down a warlock using horrific rituals to kill a lot of people. But other times he might be hunting down a werewolf, he might be trying to discover what keeps the pixies going, yes, pixies, and it really does an amazing job creating this modern day mythology pulling all of these fantasy creatures in. It has a similar feel to Supernatural or the X-Files, so if you like that Monster of the Week feel, but want better developed characters and a longer reaching story later on in the series, give Stormfront and the Dresden Files a try. Uh, it's available both as ebook and e-audiobook in Overdrive, and I cannot recommend the e-audio version enough because the narrator is just amazing and nails each of the voices for the characters, making it extremely engaging. The final book that I'm going to talk about is more a B-class horror book, which isn't really a criticism. I love B-horror. It's so much fun to really get into just a campy, action-packed, quick jump scare movie. And it's sort of hard to find that in a book form. But Grady Hendrix, a horror writer who's a little bit more modern, specializes in this. And my favorite book by him is called Horror Store. Horror Store takes place in this store called Orsk. Orsk is basically an Ikea. And several Orsk employees, including the store manager, have decided to stay overnight because of graffiti that keeps happening when they close. And they think they're going to catch the perpetrators. Only there's something much, much darker going on. This is filled with all the classic horror tropes. You know, there's ghosts, there's possessions, there's different things like that. People split up and disappear. You know, even the character tropes feel very like B-class horror, but it nails it. It makes it engaging, a quick read. You don't have to think really deep about it because it is exactly what it says on the surface. And the outline of the book looks like an Ikea order catalog. There's even, each chapter starts with an outline of different products that Orsk makes that just gives it a really unique feel. If you like that sort of campy, almost funny horror, then give anything by Grady H Hendrix, but specifically Horror Store, a try. All right, well, those are all the books that I have for today. I hope that you've enjoyed this. I'd love to hear your thoughts if you give any of these books a try, or maybe you have horror recommendations of your own. After all, as a fan of horror, I am always looking for more books to try. All right, well, thank you. Mm -hmm.